What is up, you guys? Today, we are going to go over all of the updates to old plugins in FL Studio with the new FL Studio 21 edition. This will not include the actual new plugins, but what's new with old plugins. If you want to see about new plugins, click above. Without further ado, please like and subscribe. And let's get started. First things first, we have a change with Vintage Chorus, where any options that we right click or we go to set or type in a value are going to have more detail. You see here we have a milliseconds option. That's because we're setting a time and milliseconds. In Maximus, our grid lines here in the back and our envelope lines are actually brighter and easier to see. This is actually something that's harder to see unless these are sitting directly side by side. Very minor change, but the change is still there. Flex presets can now be undone with Control Z. So if I like what I have and I ended up changing it to a different preset, I can always Control Z to go back, which in FL Studio 20 is not an option. Next thing we have, which is a very interesting option, if I open up an effect here and I click our icon, come to the back, and I go to troubleshooting, there is an allow FL Studio to undo when Control Z is pressed. This option that we have now, when it's off, while I'm in the plugin, I can't undo changes in FL Studio. I'll click Control Z, nothing is happening. However, when I turn that back on, Control Z now undid my volume change. What is also new with Patcher is if you'll see here, I have a 3x oscillator in here. We couldn't do that before. So 3x os, dx10, and the fruit kick can all now be used within Patcher, which is awesome. And there's also this cool new VFX sequencer that can be used within Patcher. Next, we have Edison. Now, in Edison, there is now multiple selections to envelopes. So I can set multiple points in here. And if I click Control and drag, I can now select multiple points, which we were not able to do in FL Studio 20. There is also notes that the scripts for Edison are now hard-coded. Coders will understand this more than I do. But the idea of hard coding, from my understanding, is that the values in the code and the code itself is less flexible and more defined. And I could see that helping with compatibility between platforms, but I honestly don't really know. So if you're a coder out there, let us know down below because I'm pretty interested. And I hope that's something that when you hear about it, you're like, wow, that's cool. Now, for our audio editors like Edison, and this is going to include SliceX and the Fruity Convolver, scripts have now been changed to Python uh, instead of using the PAX compiler. That to Python, which is more universal, which means hooray for Mac users. Scripts are now compatible with Mac, and you can write your own scripts for use on Macintosh. Fruity Convolver. For our impulse response here, I uh, used to have a maximum length of one minute. That one minute maximum length has now been increased, which is awesome. So you can now have extremely long impulse responses if you want. Something really cool that's now in FL Studio is there is new operators we can put in here, like a new FMOD operator and a few other options. I'm not going to explain to you how those work because I'm not entirely sure. I played with them a little bit, but I'll include a list below of all the different options as well as every single option that's actually available. Grossbeat has a new juggling science preset. And this preset is supposed to be really good for electronic music, for like chopping and glitching. Something you could probably use really fun with a synth. We also have new options for sound font player. If we click the bottom down here, we have program modes, which determines how patches are triggered. Automatic is default. Instrument is note on until note off. So if you play a note or hold a note, it waits until I let go. And drum plays the full sample, ignoring the note off and just going beginning to end. And last but not least, we have the Z Game Editor Visualizer. Now, I don't really ever use this, so I'm probably going to butcher a bunch of this stuff. But the first thing to see that's really cool, let's open a preset so we can tell. Got this cool looking preset going here, right? 
I can actually show any transparency. This one's not going to show it. Let's do something simple. Let's do goop. So you can see the green goop flying with the transparency there. So you know if we put this over something that we'd be able to see the object behind. So to buffer, if you'll see, it's not on here, but it's on back here. And what to buffer does is if I click to buffer on this, for example, it takes this and everything behind it and turns it into one loadable image. And then I can go forward and I can actually recall that image later up here. Let's go here and just change this to image effects and we'll go image. Now, as you can see, I can come here and I can choose one of our outputs that are set to buffer. And in here, we can actually look at those layers specifically. So to show it simply, I'll go to buffer here. Now we have this image. Now I can go ahead and insert a layer before. And so now D is before C. This is the new one I added. Image, output from layer B. Now we have the same thing. But I can see the difference between the final output and the one set to buffer. Something else new and cool we have is our little surface tab here, which is like Patcher, where we can actually build our own little graphics user interface and save that as a preset to modulate and use for our Z Game Editor Visualizer. Z Game also includes one more new effect. If you want to go find it, it's called Dub Switcher Alpha Key right here. And HUD text can now find fonts outside of the font folders. You can find the font folder buried pretty deep. It's in your program files for image line with your FL Studio version. And then going into your plugins, finding Z game and in Z game, it has effects where you'll go to the HUD effects for those fonts. And here is your fonts folder. And you can add more fonts in here. Uh, but supposedly, this is now able to find fonts that are not in the fonts folder. I am assuming, however, they probably need to be in the HUD folder. There was other things added to Z Game Editor. However, I could not proof of concept the changes and the notes that were made. So for now, that just about covers it. And that's that. We covered quite a few plugins, timestamps below, and I really hope that this video was helpful. If you like this video, please like the video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio and adios.